he had some kind of a rage he felt angry we don't know why uh, and poor Alan Greaves was simply identified as a, as a suitable victim they were really really affected um, I think you know it was one of those cases that that was really truly heartbreaking and it really did get to them Yeah, well, it was a case that shocked Sheffield. Not only Sheffield, it shocked the entire nation. Alan Greaves, 68-year-old marriage man, a grandfather, he was walking to his local church to play the organ on Christmas Eve. Um, he, he'd done that for years and years. He was a volunteer there. He was a, a pillar of the local community. He'd set up a food bank. He was a very, very well-respected, um, well-loved local man. Obviously, the entire community was devastated at his death. Um, the star found out about it, uh, not on Christmas Eve when he was attacked. Uh, we found out a couple of days later when the police said that he had been attacked and then sadly died a couple of days later. Um, obviously the star went straight up to High Green, spoke to the local community, spoke to the local church, national newspapers, they also flooded the area. Um, Christmas is a traditionally quiet time for newspapers and this this shocked this shocked the entire country. What was the feeling up there in the High Green community at the time? Shock, devastation, disappointment. You know, Christmas is traditionally a, a time to be with your family, a, a time of celebration and the atmosphere in that little Sheffield suburb was I've never known anything like it. So can you tell us how the police eventually caught Alan's killers? Well, one of the methods um, of identifying the killers uh, was a CCTV trawl in the area. Whether it was one resident or numerous residents, um, but the police managed to get some footage of two males walking along the street where Alan was attacked. Um, one of the men that was on that CCTV um, Ashley Foster, he came forward, he handed himself in and he did that because he didn't think he'd done anything wrong. He wasn't the attacker, so he thought he was in the clear. His stepbrother was the attacker, Jonathan Bowling. Both these men were 22. Jonathan did actually admit murder, he pleaded guilty. Um, Ashley, the one that thought he was going to be in the clear, um, he maintained that stance throughout. He went to court, stood trial, he was charged with manslaughter as opposed to murder because he didn't actually inflict the, the fatal injuries. Um, but the police said, well, he was there, he knew about it, you're just as guilty. Um, and he was found guilty of manslaughter. Um, he got nine years, so he'll be out now, he'll be walking the streets again. Um, the killer, he got life with a minimum of 25 years, so he still has a considerable amount of time still behind bars. So I was um, court reporter at the Star at the time of the murder. Um, my first involvement, I went up to High Green and I actually did um, door knocked um, Alan's widow, Maureen. Um, and the idea of the door knock is that you go and speak to the bereaved person and you find out a little bit more about the person who's died. Um, so that you can, you know, um, explain to the readers what they were like as a person, um, why it's such a big loss, that kind of thing. So I went up to High Green and I think I must have put a letter through Maureen's door because I remember she wasn't there the first time. But then we arranged by appointment for me to go back and see her and um, I went back up with a photographer and she gave a lengthy interview about her, um, her relationship with Alan and what a wonderful person he was. Um, Maureen and Alan were both social workers in the Sheffield area. Um, they were heavily involved with the church. They had set up a food bank three weeks earlier and this was 10 years ago at a time when food banks didn't really exist. Um, and they were very well known in the local community. They were both involved with the church. Alan was a lay preacher. Um, so he used to occasionally go and take services at the church. And they also had um, a family, so they had you know, children and grandchildren. 
So Maureen was really unusual in that she was very open to giving media interviews. She was very welcoming, um, you know, she invited us into her home. She wanted us to be there. She wanted to talk about Alan. She wanted people to know the kind of person that um, he was and what a terrible loss it was, not just for her and her family, but, you know, for the, the wider community. So she was really um, lovely, chatty, friendly. We got on very well. Um, we did end up staying in touch for quite a long time after that first visit. Um, and then the next time I saw her was at um, Alan's funeral. So obviously this was a huge occasion. It was held in the church where he'd been going to play um, the midnight mass. And there was a huge turnout. There were people on the streets, the service was um, you know, broadcast outside the church for people to listen to. There were police officers there, the senior detectives involved in the case. Um, you know, practically the whole high green community turned out for Alan's funeral. Um, and it was a really you know, emotional event as you would expect. Yeah, the, the, the senior detectives involved in the case, how touched were, were they by what happened to Alan? How did it affect them? So um, they were very open and honest actually about how awful they'd been, you know, how badly they'd been affected and what a terrible and upsetting case it was for them to investigate. And I remember um, after the end of the trial, the SIO, the senior investigating officer, um, spoke to me and he said that after the first appearance of the two young men at magistrate's court, he'd got into a lift with Alan Greaves' wife Maureen and her, one of her daughters and some police staff and he said that they all just broke down in tears um, because of the pressure of the hearing in the magistrate's court and all the media attention because obviously you know there was huge media attention at the time as well so you know they were really really affected um, I think you know it was one of those cases that that was really truly heartbreaking and it really did get to them. The relationship that you had with the victim's family was very unusual can you tell us what it's normally like when you do a death knock in these horrific circumstances? Uh, well it's the one thing that reporters absolutely dread doing they hate having to go up and knock on people's doors when you know somebody has died it's it's known in the trade as a death knock it's upsetting it's nerve-wracking you never know whether you're going to get the door slammed in your face or if somebody's going to invite you in and give you a cup of tea and, and want to talk about their loved one so Maureen was unusual in that you know she was lovely she was very polite to all the media really friendly really kind and she made that job a lot easier to do can you take us back to the the trial and how were the two you know how did you how did how how did you find covering the trial so the trial happened at Sheffield Crown Court in July 2013 um, the star covered it pretty much every day um, so it was um, Ashley Foster who was on trial for manslaughter um, it it went on for weeks there was a lot of very graphic evidence um, because Alan had been hit over the head with an axe handle, a pickaxe. So the jury was shown Alan's hat um, that he was wearing. So he'd, he'd left the house that night, walked down to church, forgot his hat. So he'd gone home to get his hat because it was a cold December night, put his hat on, um, set off back down um, towards the church. And so we, we, the jury was shown the hat and in the hat you could see where the pickaxe had gone into, um, you know, through the material. Um, and that was one of the pieces of forensic evidence that the jury had to consider and they had to look at, you know, um, the sort of marks and the damage done to the hat. So the case went on for several weeks. There was a lot of forensic evidence. There was the CCTV footage of um, the two men walking down high um, in the road in High Green, um, which put them at the crime scene a few seconds after the attack had happened. So again, it was un unusual. Um, families often in murder trials uh, are looking for, you know, justice and. Um, you know, they are pleased to see attackers put behind bars. Maureen's approach was different. She was very forgiving. She was a Christian. She believed in forgiveness. Um, I think on the day that Ashley was found guilty, she said that she, she forgave um, him and Jonathan. Um, interestingly, he did write her a letter, um, which he gave to the CPS, um, 
And on the day of um, the conviction, Maureen said that it was too little too late and that she wasn't going to read the letter. Now, whether in the interim period, you know, the last 10 years she, she has opened that letter, we'll never know. But, um, but yeah, she was very forgiving towards, you know, the two men that had taken away her husband. Can you tell us what it's like to be a court reporter and how you go home at night and, and switch off after hearing some of the horrific things that you, that you come across at court? Yeah, so um, I was a court reporter at the Star for about 10 years and during that time I covered lots of cases, lots of murder cases, domestic violence, rapes. Um, you know, you do hear some pretty horrific and graphic evidence. Um, as a court reporter you don't tend to see um, images that the jury see, um, but you, you know, you hear the evidence. and. Um, there are some cases that do get to you. I mean, obviously, the case of Alan Greaves is one that stayed with me for a long time, and I'll, I won't forget it, you know, till this day, just because I was involved with the family. Um, you know, it, I could see how devastating their grief was. Um, it was a real loss. You know, he was obviously a community stalwart um, and a, a very sad and tragic death that he suffered, and, and violent as well. Who were Alan Greaves was simply identified as a, as a suitable victim. Um, the judge who jailed him for life said it was a gratuitous, reprehensible and horrific attack 